Okay, so this is my Raspberry Pi 4 8 gig, and uh, it's running Berry Boot from an SD card, which is a multi boot operating system. And I've got loads of videos on Berry Boot, I've got a whole playlist of it, so I'll put a link to that in the description. But it's going to be running Ubuntu from this SSD drive. Uh, so the initial boot is here and then it switches over to run the whole operating system from the SSD drive So you get all the benefits of the extra speed and everything. So let's plug it in Okay, so here's the Berry boot menu. So that shows up. You can press return to speed up the process You can see I've got some other operating systems on there So I found a weird quirk in that it doesn't seem to want to boot up unless I've got an Ethernet cable plugged in Which is a bit weird and I've not had that with previous versions of Ubuntu but I often use Ethernet anyway, so I'm not going to worry about that too much. So I'm going to switch over to screen capture and log in. Okay, so here's how Ubuntu boots up. It's a very nice looking operating system. Uh, if we go to the start menu, if you see my other videos, I've got a, a video of 10 different distros in Ubuntu 20.04. Uh, so you can have a look and see which ones you like. I particularly like Lubuntu. Ubuntu and Ubuntu Budgie, um, but uh, if we have a look at what we've got here So additional drivers archive manager backups. There's a terminal Calculator document scanner disk which give you the information about the disk disk usage analyzer uh, There's a camera option there. I don't have a camera in my pie calendar document viewer files Firefox is the web browser that comes with it as standard fonts help HTOP, image viewer, input method, uh, LibreOffice, so Calc, Draw, and Impress. And there's also Writer on there as well. Uh, Ubuntu updates itself, so you can use that uh, to update the apps and the software. Uh, and it does it with a graphical interface, which is quite nice. Uh, if you like that sort of thing, certainly very user-friendly, certainly very easy to use. We've got some casual games, so Minds is on there. Looking down, so here's, with, here's our software and software updater system monitor as well uh, as a video playing app so it comes very well supported with the things that you would need from an operating system uh, if we go into the top part here and settings i like the way this is laid out so if i click on settings here we go so it's very quickly uh, scans through various different things and you can see so interestingly bluetooth isn't showing up so i think i'll plug in my bluetooth dongle and see if that works so I plugged in my Bluetooth dongle, oh, and straight away, it didn't even have to think about it, and I've never plugged this into this system. And here is my speaker, So, which is not switched on. It must obviously send out a Bluetooth signal on its own. Put my speaker into pairing mode. Ready to pair. And click on that. Connected to Raspberry B. There you go. So I'm connected up to my Bluetooth speaker. There's my Android TV that it picks up as well. Uh, so background, you can change. I like the background that comes with it, but obviously you have lots of other options. Light, dark, and standard. So it's on standard at the moment. And the dock can auto hide. Different sizes. Loads of things about notifications for individual apps and programs and things, which is really interesting. So you can search across multiple platforms. And let's go for about right at the bottom here, just to show that memory 7.6. So it's running uh, on eight gig of RAM. It's a 64 bit OS, uh, and it tells you the various different versions and things there. So really nice to see, really nice to use. Let's connect Firefox and have a look at YouTube performance. So let's pick one of my videos and have a look. So let's click on this one. When Advert started up all right, like looking days. decent. It's switching time to a Chromebook with up to 12 hours of battery. Life. Just turn down the volume and it's it uh, it paused momentarily. I don't know if that was to do with me turning down the volume. Or built in security, so you won't lose all your stuff. So let's skip that ad. It looks like it's playing all right though. Oh, paused a bit on the intro. Okay, so this is my second video on the Pendleton e-bike. Uh, oh, it's uh, a bit jumpy. Uh, had it on loan from a friend, uh, from yeah, that's so that's 1080. So I'll just get rid of the audio. Uh, so let's have a look at 720. 
and pop that full screen. That seems to be playing better. So 720 is not as bad. Uh, at the moment I've got, I installed uh, H264 or enhanced H264 FI uh, and I've blocked 60 FPS video. So it's still not the best performance you get on the Pi and I just managed to skip right to the end of the video which I didn't mean to do. Um, but it's uh, but it's reasonable. It's certainly a lot better than some. So let's go full screen again. Let's have a bit of audio, see if it's playing. It's not yet, is it? It is an issue. Obviously, the good news about the hardware support, the Vulcan hardware support, um, could make a difference to video playback because we really need it. Because considering this is running from an SSD and it's on an 8 gig operating system, it picks up now. See, if anything, I often find that it sorts itself out once it's been running for a while. Now that could be a Firefox thing uh, on Pi. So if I if I right click on the screen and do stats for nerds, I found earlier on that yes it was dropping a lot of frames, but then after a while it it coped with it and it was fine. Those, look at the frames there. So now it's picked up, right, so 11.03. Let's see if it's gonna keep dropping for, yeah, it's still going. It's weird, it definitely comes and goes. Raspberry Pi OS is a much more lean operating system and does cope better with video playback. Um, but I've had it hit and miss with Ubuntu. But yeah, that's still dropping frames, look. Oh well, let's quit out of that and let's move on to some other bits. Uh, because I like, I like Ubuntu uh, for a lot of its files and things like that. I think it deals with files in a, in a particularly good way. Uh, it's nice and easy to understand. Uh, you've got this other locations tab so I can get my NAS drive and I can grab files from that very, very simply. I, I think the layout is, is brilliant. Very, very straightforward to use. The video thing tends to affect all operating systems. Um, so if I double click on an image, you can see that it comes up and if I use the arrows, I can flick through some of the images that are on there, some of the wallpapers that are on there. But I can also, while that's open, let's open Writer and let's import an image into that. Let's get Firefox running in the background. Certainly got enough RAM to be able to multitask. So let's go back to Writer and let's put um, photos and let's make that a lot bigger. And let's insert a picture image. See if it picks up my NAS drive. WD, yeah, that's my NAS drive. That's nice to see that it's just picked that up uh, within that file system straight away. Uh, let's get something like that and hit open. So we've got that document. Also, interestingly, it picked up my printer and I did a test print earlier on. Uh, if I go to print, you can see that it automatically recognizes my uh, Wi-Fi connected printer. Uh, and that was really nice to see because not all Linux systems recognize it in such a straightforward way. Uh, so image viewer, writer, folders. You can see that it's, it, it copes fine. You can, you can go between these folders and documents and things. It doesn't struggle. Uh, if I click on the settings mode, that comes up reasonably fast. Certainly a lot faster than Kylin, which I tried yesterday, which really was a lovely looking operating system, but dis disappointing on the uh, on the way that it, or on the speed of it, basically. So if you're looking for speed, I would still stick with Raspberry Pi OS. The 64-bit version, even though it's in beta, is, is excellent and really works well. Uh, I like the App Store on Ubuntu as well, though, which uh, and some people are like the way that it updates. So I would want to install a, a proper app store on there where you can search, but that, that is definitely a possible in Ubuntu. 
just trying to think which one it's called. But as I say, I know it comes uh, as soon as you install uh, another distro, uh, some of them have definitely got it on there. So I think Lubuntu comes with one and I think possibly Ubuntu Budgie does as well. So let's do stories in the last week because there was definitely some people had, yeah, so official Ubuntu desktop support uh, for the Raspberry Pi 4, which is weird because I've been using Ubuntu on it for quite some time, but maybe it's going to be an image that you install and it just installs Ubuntu straight off because the way you do this, and I'll link to uh, videos that explain how to install this, but basically uh, you you have a non-graphical user interface, so you come up with uh, just a terminal and you have to install the desktop separately yourself and it's not, it's not very user friendly. Uh, if you haven't got Wi-Fi, you can't do it because there are no, there's no way of doing it without a wired connection. So it's a bit of a strange one, but uh, at least they are definitely working on it. I do really like it as a system. As I say, I do use it and I do find there are certain apps on there that, that tend to run slightly better than or, or do install, uh, whereas they don't in Raspberry Pi OS. But that could change now that 64 bits come along. So uh, Ubuntu is going to have to work strong if it's going to beat Raspberry Pi OS. Uh, but it's still Raspberry Pi OS for me because it starts up super quick. It's lightning fast. Uh, it just needs a bit of polish, really. It looks a bit dated and the way that you download apps uh, is is poor. Um, but uh, But still, it's nice to have all these options. So let's close that down and I'll show you what happens uh, with the other operating systems. If I go to the top here and shut down. Raspberry P4 disconnected. Ready you, can, to prepare. you can hear my Bluetooth speaker disconnecting. So the Berry Boot menu comes up if I restart and you can see I've got Raspberry Pi OS 64 bit, I've got Twister OS, uh, the Ubuntu which I've just been using. But you see this other one here, I installed Lubuntu and also uh, Ubuntu Budgie. So if I hit that as set default and hit exit and then hit boot and that's the part that it wouldn't get past. So after it says failed, it wouldn't get past that without an ethernet cable plugged in, which is really weird. Um, but, uh, and I thought that this particular um, image that was in Berry Boot, I thought that it had got corrupted because I've been playing around with it and installing other images. And that's the reason I used the uh, build with just Ubuntu because I thought there was something wrong with this version of Ubuntu uh, running in Berry Boot, but turns out it's fine. It just needed, well, it just needed an ethernet cable plugged in. So it's not fine, but uh, I can get it up and running. So you can see here, I've installed Budgie and Lubuntu and they install, these little bits around them so there'll be like a lighter version or something to do with it. So if I click on Lubuntu, I put my password in. So this is still Ubuntu 20.04, but this is just a different distro. Uh, and so all of the apps that were previously in the other version of Ubuntu will be in this, but also it installs a few more. So you can see it starts up nice and quick. Uh, and you'll start to see, so if I go to, yeah, if I go to software, you see software catalog is being downloaded. And this is what I want to see in my distros. I want to see a way of installing and searching for apps. So for instance, if I click on games, then I can see uh, a little icon of the game. I can click on it. It will show me on the website. It's a bit slow. Uh, it has only just started up. Um, but if I saw a game and I thought, oh yeah, Endless Sky, that looks interesting, I can click on that. And then uh, you've got install, but you've also got websites. So there's a link to go to the website. There you go, and it comes up with an image and you can work out if it's something that you think you want to download. So that's really nice. Uh, obviously, you can install that into Ubuntu, uh, or if you install another distro, it seems to add it anyway. Let's just show you a little bit of Ubuntu budget. I made this at the bottom a bit bigger. Uh, but apart from that, I haven't changed anything on this. Uh, I just It comes up with tiny icons, and so I made it a bit bigger because I thought it was a bit better. Uh, and it didn't overlap this 20.04. Uh, if you're wondering why that's being overlapped on that line, it's because I've made this bottom line nearly twice as big as it was. If I shut down, so now if I click on my login, click down on the cog and do budgie desktop, pop my password in and see how quick that loads up. I'll leave it in real time this time so you can see exactly what happens when it does this bit. Not bad actually. Just waiting for the dock and there is the dock. I like Budgie because I like the dock. 
So uh, running apps turn up in here. So if I was to click on uh, calculator, it adds it to the dock and I can right click the dock and I can do keep in dock. And I, I really like that behavior. I like the way it works. I would make this a bit bigger as well. You can see the software app. I think I put that on there on the dock. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so at the moment, it's not quite as fast as Raspberry Pi OS, but it does give you another choice. Okay, so I hope you like this. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.